Friends, we find ourselves grappling with news that strikes at the heart of our nation. The gravity of the situation cannot be overstated, as it touches the very core of our collective consciousness. An attempt was made on the life of former President Donald J. Trump again. This shocking event has left the nation reeling as we try to comprehend the implications of such a brazen act. It happened on a Florida golf course, a place meant for leisure and sport, now forever marked by this horrific act. The serene greens and fairways, once a symbol of relaxation, have been transformed into a scene of chaos and fear. Details remain scarce, but the intent is clear to silence a powerful voice in American politics. The investigation is ongoing, with authorities working tirelessly to uncover the truth behind this heinous crime. This wasn't just an attack on a man, it was an attack on his supporters, on our values, on the very idea of America. The ramifications of this act extend far beyond the individual, striking at the heart of our national identity. This act of violence has sent shockwaves through the nation. Communities are grappling with a mix of fear, anger, and disbelief as they process the news. For many, it feels like a nightmare come true. The sense of security that we often take for granted has been shattered, leaving us to question the safety of our leaders and the stability of our society. The political climate has been heated for years, but this incident pushes us dangerously close to the brink. The divisions within our nation have been laid bare, and the potential for further unrest looms large. It's a stark reminder that words have consequences, and the rhetoric we use matters. The power of language to incite or to heal is undeniable, and we must be mindful of the impact our words can have. We must come together as Americans, condemn this violence, and demand justice. Our response to this crisis will define us as a nation, and it is imperative that we choose unity over division. We cannot let fear divide us. We must stand united against those who seek to silence dissenting voices. Our strength lies in our ability to come together in the face of adversity, to uphold the principles that define us. The future of our nation depends on it. In these trying times, let us remember the values that bind us together and strive to build a more just and united America. The initial reaction to news like this is always the same. Shock, disbelief, and then the creeping tendrils of fear. It's a visceral response that grips the heart and mind, leaving people momentarily paralyzed as they try to process the gravity of the situation. It's a natural human response to such a traumatic event. The need to seek comfort in others, to hold on to something tangible, is a way to ground oneself amidst the chaos. The shared experience of fear and anxiety brings people closer, even if just for a moment. For supporters of President Trump, the fear is amplified. They see this attack not just as an isolated incident, but as a potential harbinger of things to come. The anxiety is palpable, and the sense of foreboding is almost overwhelming. They see this attack not just as an isolated incident, but as a potential harbinger of things to come. The anxiety is palpable. The fear that this could be the beginning of a series of targeted attacks is a heavy burden to bear. The uncertainty of what the future holds adds to the collective unease. Many are asking themselves, if they could try to silence him, who else will they target? The questions are endless, and the answers are elusive. The fear of being next, of being caught in the crossfire of political violence, is a terrifying prospect. Will any of us be safe? The sense of vulnerability is pervasive, and the fear of the unknown looms large. The idea that anyone could be a target, that no one is truly safe, is a chilling thought that lingers in the back of everyone's mind. These are not irrational fears, they are the unfortunate reality of living in a world where political violence is becoming increasingly commonplace. The rise in such incidents has eroded the sense of security that many once took for granted. The constant barrage of troubling news only serves to heighten the sense of dread. This incident has shattered the illusion of safety for many. The belief that such violence could never touch their lives has been irrevocably broken. The sense of invulnerability has been replaced with a stark awareness of the fragility of their security. They feel vulnerable, exposed, and uncertain about the future. The fear of what might come next is a heavy weight on their shoulders. The sense of being unprotected, of being at the mercy of forces beyond their control, is a daunting reality to face. 
It's a feeling of powerlessness that can be debilitating. The sense that there is nothing they can do to change the situation, that they are helpless in the face of such violence, is a crushing blow to their spirit. The struggle to find hope in such dark times is a battle in itself. But we must not succumb to fear. In the face of such adversity, it is crucial to find strength in unity. The power of collective action, of standing together in solidarity, can be a beacon of hope. It is a reminder that even in the darkest times, there is still the potential for change. We must channel that fear into action, into demanding better protection for our leaders and a return to civil discourse in our political landscape. The call for change is not just a cry for safety, but a plea for a more just and peaceful society. It is a reminder that we all have a role to play in shaping the future and that together we can make a difference. For those closest to President Trump, this attempted assassination is a deeply personal trauma. The people who work for him, who believe in his vision for America, are now facing their own mortality in a very real way. The emotional toll is immense. They are grappling with the knowledge that their association with him could make them targets. This is not just about politics anymore. It's about personal safety. The fear is palpable in their voices, in the way they move through the world. They are looking over their shoulders, wondering if they are being followed, if they are in danger. This constant state of hypervigilance takes its toll. It's exhausting, both mentally and physically. They are living with the knowledge that their lives could be in danger simply because of who they support. This is not the America we know. We cannot allow fear to dictate our lives. They're lying. In the aftermath of this attack, there's a palpable sense of distrust towards the media and government institutions. Many Trump supporters already harbored suspicions about the information being fed to them. Now, with this attempted assassination, those suspicions are hardening into concrete convictions. They see conspiracies, cover-ups, and a deliberate attempt to silence their voices. Headlines are met with skepticism, official statements dissected for hidden meanings. The narrative, they believe, is being controlled, spun to fit an agenda that seeks to discredit them and their beliefs. This distrust isn't just about the event itself. It's about a broader feeling of being ignored, dismissed, and demonized by the powers that be. Every word uttered by officials is scrutinized, every action analyzed for ulterior motives. This deep-seated distrust isn't easily assuaged. It festers, fueled by a steady diet of misinformation and amplified by echo chambers that confirm existing biases. Bridging this chasm of distrust feels like an insurmountable task. A nation divided, polarization and the escalation of anger. This attempted assassination is a horrifying symptom of a much larger disease, the ever-widening political divide in our nation. America is more polarized than ever, and this event has only poured gasoline on the fire. The anger, the resentment, the feeling of being on opposing sides of a cultural war, it's all reaching a fever pitch. Civil discourse has been replaced with screaming matches on social media. Compromise is seen as weakness, and any attempt at understanding the other side is met with accusations of treason. We are a nation divided, and this event threatens to push us even further apart. The language being used by both sides is incendiary, fueled by fear and rage. This is not the way a civilized society functions. We need to step back from the brink to remember that we are all Americans and that we have more in common than what divides us. Finding solace in the storm, coping and community in the face of fear. In times of great uncertainty and fear, the human spirit often seeks out connection and comfort. It's in these moments that the power of community truly shines. In the face of such darkness, it's human nature to seek out light, to find comfort and strength in shared experience. The act of coming together, whether in person or virtually, provides a beacon of hope and a reminder that we are not alone in our struggles. For many Trump supporters, that solace is found in their communities, both online and offline. These gatherings, whether they are small local meetups or large rallies, offer a space where individuals can express their fears, hopes, and support for one another. They are turning to each other for support, for validation, 
for a sense of belonging in a world that suddenly feels very uncertain. These interactions, whether they are face-to-face -face or through a screen, provide a crucial lifeline. Online forums are buzzing with messages of support, prayers for President Trump's safety, and shared anxieties about the future. These digital spaces have become sanctuaries where people can voice their concerns and find solidarity. These virtual spaces have become lifelines for many, offering a sense of community and shared purpose in a time of crisis. The ability to connect with others who share similar experiences and emotions can be incredibly comforting. Rallies and gatherings are also being organized, providing a physical space for people to come together, to grieve, to vent their anger, and to find strength in numbers. These events serve as a powerful reminder of the collective strength and resilience of the community. This sense of community is a powerful antidote to the fear and isolation that many are feeling. The act of coming together, whether in person or virtually, provides a beacon of hope and a reminder that we are not alone in our struggles. It's a reminder that they are not alone, that there are others who understand what they're going through and who are there to offer support. The simple act of a hug, a kind word, or a shared moment of silence can make a world of difference. This shared experience, this sense of belonging is crucial for navigating the difficult days ahead. It is through these connections that we find the strength to face our fears and the courage to move forward together.